Julia Curry is our second speaker. She is an eating psychology coach and a global ambassador uh, for body image movement, as well as a contributor for the Huffington Post and a guest blogger for various online publications. Julia is known for her transformative retreats and online classes that help women discover a shift in how they think about their food, their bodies, and how they value themselves. Julia is determined to be the change that she wants to see in our world. In her own community, she founded Embrace Indy, where she hosted sold-out events featuring a positive, body-positive documentary, where she teaches participants the global impact of body loathing, its origins, and how to create something new. Julia earned a BA in communications and has certified from the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, the Center for Strategic Intervention, and the Southeastern School of Clinical, Neuromuscular, and Massage Therapy. You can find out more about Julia and her services by visiting juliacurry.com. Please help me welcome Julia to the Spark Stage. There you go. I was addicted to running from pain. We all have our hiding places. You know, those things that we reach for when we feel vulnerable. For me, it was food. Well, not just food, but food was the worst anyways. And after 15 years of fighting it, I was exhausted, ashamed. So summer 2011, I find myself at a church I did not know, looking for a basement that I couldn't find. And there's this group of people that walk into the lobby and my face flushes hot and I start scrolling my phone, hoping that they don't ask me what room I'm looking for. Because I was looking for the Overeaters Anonymous group. So just then I feel this tap on my shoulder and I turn and it's this tiny little woman with a long skirt and a covering over her head and she says, are you looking for the basement? That night I stood in front of a group of strangers and I said, my name is Julia and I am a compulsive overeater and I have a lot of other problems but do we just stick with food here? <laughs> they laughed. I had tried everything to strive and strive and strive. And here I was in front of this group of people and all I wanted to do was breathe. So I told them everything. I told them that I ate till I was numb, that I threw it up, that I hated my body so much and I punished myself with exercise and that I was pretending like I had it all together. In that moment, by the look in their faces, I realized that, you know, we may all look very different on the outside, but in a lot of ways, our insides are the same. That tiny woman that I met before, she told me that she wanted to help me learn to turn towards my pain. Because she said that although pain isn't likable, it's very trustable. And I looked at her like, what? So she became my sponsor. So this woman called me every single day for a year, almost every day, and taught me how to sit with my pain for 30 seconds, a minute or longer. And I began to realize that what was inside of me was so much bigger than the pain that I feared. We strive so hard. We try to change our habits, our bodies, our persona, and even our partners because we don't want to feel pain. We all have our hiding places. And trying to fix ourselves is one of them. So listen to your restlessness. You know that little twinge you get right when you're about to reach for something you don't need. Could it be pain just asking to be heard? And if so, could you just slow down and listen? Could it be that the very pain that was your prison is the very thing that wants to set you free? Will you embrace the gift? Thank you.